up and running, okay? So, here we go. Anybody really have any questions from yesterday? Charlotte, what? Um, I have a question on 24. Let's see what's going on. This guy right here, 24? Uh, yeah, 24. All right, let me see if I can pull it down. All right, let's see what the problem is here. All right, so let's see what we have. Statements. <coughs> and we have some reasons. All right, so we do know that... Um, we are given that it is a what? Yeah, we're given that it is a uh, parallelogram. All right. Now, for so we're talking about B D H A. All right. So, given that is a parallelogram, there's a lot we know. Um, now, really, the definition of parallelogram is just the opposite sides are parallel. But we proved that if it's a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, all of that. All right? So we are trying to prove that angle BDH. So let's find BDH. We're trying to find this angle right here. And we want that congruent to angle what? We want that congruent to angle G somehow. All right. Now, um, uh, number one here, we'll just start out with the given. All right. Now, again, it's also telling me that CA, this, this length right here, CA, is congruent to what? CG. CG. All right. So now that we know that, I, I think it's not that tricky. All right. Um, somebody want to step in? Tell me. What do you think? I, I, I did. Go ahead, Mr. Osborne. I did. Very, very, very good. All right, so let's start with that. All right, we know that angle G is congruent to angle A. And we would just say um, opposite angles of isosceles triangle are congruent. All right, does everybody see that? All right, now again, I, I, honestly, I'm not expecting you to memorize it's the converse or, you know, I, I don't care about that. I, I would prefer that you just say opposite angles of an isosceles, right? Or I shouldn't say the opposite angles. I should have said what? Base angles. All right. So let's go ahead and change the opposite to base. All right. Those are the base angles. Base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. All right. So now I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to mark this is congruent to this. All right. What? Luke, what's next? Well, then you can do what angle A is congruent to angle B, D, H. Right. Hold on a minute. Angle A is congruent to angle B, D, H. Because why? Let 
now what? Thank you. That was excellent work. Easy, easy, easy. All right. And again, I, I'm I'm kind of expecting you guys to be able to do that. All right. I, I don't think that was too bad. All right. A little bit tricky. All right. As soon as they mentioned something about the angles, I tried to pick up on some relationship with angles, not necessarily the sides. Yeah. Can you do twenty-four? Anybody else have any questions with twenty-four before I go on to twenty-three? All right. That wasn't too bad. All right, let's take a look now at 23. All right, let's look at this, see if it's harder. And what I said, guys, it's it's not about you know me expecting you to get it all right. I'm expecting you to write it down and give it a shot. That's what I'm expecting. All right. Now, again, on this one, um, it's just saying that WXTV. So I, I'm really going to have to highlight W uh, X. Okay. So this right here. Is a parallelogram. And is it the other overlapping one that's a parallelogram? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of super annoying. All right. Um, now, I think what I might try to do is I might try to come over here and just label this W, X, V, T. That's why I kind of. see that all right and then we can move this one overlapping next to it and we might be able to visualize it of course that's what you're supposed to do on your paper anyway i just know it's more annoying all right so this is y z t v now when i highlight it i move it over all right all right now the one thing I can say which is a little bit confusing is that is angle T equal to angle T in this figure that I moved over to the right? No, so I have to really be careful. Right? It's definitely not the same. All right. So let's just go ahead. Let me just write that out. Let me copy it in there real quick and then I'll ask you guys for help. All right. So this, it says, is the pair, these are the parallelograms. I don't even know if that's going to help me actually. All right, and the one is given. All right, we're trying to prove, and I'm going to draw on my figure. I'm trying to prove that WX, oh, come on, man. This one's real easy, All right? This one's super easy. I believe someone just summarized it for me. I don't even want to go anything further. Yeah, so YZ is perpendicular to and WX is perpendicular to the opposite sides of the parallelogram. Exactly, exactly. I made it too hard. Right, I was trying to separate them. All right, but then again, I knew there was a problem because angle T, right, is not the same as that angle T. All right, so everybody take a look at that again. All right, and like, like I said, I don't care if you got it right or you got it wrong. All right, I'm telling you, you just got to try every single proof that I'm asking you to do. All right, just try it. Eventually, you'll get better at it. All right, some of you haven't quite figured that out yet. Now, again, do I need to write that out? All right. Opposite sides of the parallelogram are congruent. And then one pair of opposite sides is congruent to the other. So those two have to be congruent by substitution or transient property, however you like. All right. Is everybody pretty good with that? Everybody good? Yes. Yes, that's 35. Good for you. Let's find 35 and see what that is. All right. So here we have it. Um, we're trying to figure out what A, C, D is. All right, so I need to figure out what A, C, D is right here, right? 
All right. Now, do you, can you tell me that you know this is 59 degrees right there? Does that make sense? Right. Now, again, everybody look up here because I think this is actually was one of, one of my test questions last year because I thought it was kind of tricky. All right. So in my opinion, I think we should just do all the angles here, everything that we can do. All right. So let's do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow this up a little bit right here. And um, if you don't mind, we're going to go ahead and put this as what? 49. 49. And then what's this angle right here? Yes, I think everybody should do that. That's 131. This guy right here has to be 131. So now I need help with that angle right there. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me what you think it is. Yes, and 29 is perfect. All right, the angles of a triangle add up to 180. All right, that's nice. So if that's 29, then this over here has to be what? 29. Now I have 59 and 49. Does everybody agree with that? So then I could find this part right here. And once I find that part, I know this part. And I have 131 and 29, so I know this part, even though we already know that has to be what? 20. I, I think that's really important also, guys. If you're able to look at all those angles and figure them out, you have a pretty good understanding. All right. If not, you've got to look at it and figure it out. That's why I keep trying to tell some of you guys who want a better grade, you're kind of daydreaming right now. Stop daydreaming. All right, focus up here so we can get it done. You can get a better grade. If you concentrate in class, it's much easier at night. What? How do you? Oh, you don't know why it's square night? Okay, so look right here, buddy. The angles of a triangle add up to 180. So that's oh. one. There you go. So, again, now you have just more and more and more information. Right? You may not use parallelograms. You may use what? Triangles. All right? So that's good now, right? All right. Anybody else on this, guys? Yes. Uh, 37. All right. What's wrong with 37? Let me find it here. Determine the coordinates of D if it's in quadrant 3. All right. Now, remember, parallelograms mean the sides are equal and the opposite sides are parallel. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to uh, put it in uh, on graph paper because I want you to see how you should do it. All right, here we go. And yesterday I blew it, so I'm going to try not to do it this today. All right, here we go. So here's my axis. All right, come on now. Now again, if you didn't have graph paper, all right, you're just going to have to be careful when you're trying to see it using the dot, all right, on your paper. So here we go. Negative 3, 5. Now, as I'm counting this, make sure it's right. 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2 is here. 3, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Does everybody agree with that? And I'm trying to put it in what quadrant? 3. So I'm trying to figure out where this point goes, right? Now, if I want, if I want to move this point around somewhere, now it's more square. All right, I'm going to move it around a little bit. Now, if you're if you're if you're just guessing, right? I mean, from here to here, does everybody see that? That has to be the same, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, I'm going to start down here. And how many units did I go up? One, two, three. Then I went over how many? Two. How many? Four. One. <laughs> oh, no, that was so funny. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm trying to show you how simple it is. From here. All right, I have to go up and over the same amount because not only does it have to be parallel, but it has to be the same length. So if I go up three and over four, that'll create the same length. So if I go up three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, I think it would go there, right? Negative one, negative one. All right, a lot of it's visual, all right, which I think is very difficult for some. All right. Now, is that the only place that can go? 
I don't think that's the only place that can go. I think there's actually three other places it can go, but they said specifically in the third quad. Right, did I agree? Like I could put it somewhere over here. I could put it somewhere over here, right? I could put it down here somewhere, right? Did I agree with that? So again, lots of different things you can do with that. All right, does that clear everything up for everybody? All right, today honestly is, is kind of easy also, so put your name on that. All right, while you're doing that, uh, you can head your paper. All right, easy day today. Come on, guys. Chop, chop. Easy day, easy day. Give me your work. That's good work. All right, and then what you can do is right off the bat, I just made some notes for you right there. Everybody can read those first. Two notes. Okay, 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 sorry. Read, read, Okay, um, so again, so you can finish heading your papers and we'll talk about it because I think you know already. All right, page 447 through 450, 1, 2, 4 through 7, 9 through 14, 16, 18 through 27. All right, All right. like I said, I, I think this is just kind of a summary of what we did yesterday. Um, by the way, guys, I looked ahead. Um, we only have a couple more sections left to go. But my test date is on Thursday next week, and we're definitely not going to be ready on Thursday. So then my next test date is Wednesday. So we're going to have a test a week from Wednesday. All right, is everybody hearing me? And I'm trying to, I'm, I'm a little nervous sometimes, second quarter, because people don't understand. If you mess up, you're in trouble on a test. We don't have that much. That already puts us in November. Does everybody understand that? All right? Is everybody hearing me? I'm not sure you guys understand. That's November. We get out in what? December. Already time's flying. That's why I'm trying to encourage you guys. Don't mess around. Don't do your homework. All right, do it. Because we don't have much. That goes for all of your classes. All right, you can't mess up on a test. It's hard to get caught up. Maybe. All right. So with this information now, all right, let's take a look. All right, now we already know this because we already said it. Now we're just writing it as theorems and we can prove it, which we kind of did yesterday. All right, we kind of proved everything I thought. All right, we just didn't formally write everything out. So this is like converses, all right? If you have opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then it's automatically a what? Parallelogram. parallelogram. And we said if it's a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are what? Congruent. That's the converse. Everybody agree with that? All right. So now you're going to have to prove something is a parallelogram. To prove something is a parallelogram, these are the things you have to do. All right. If the opposite angles are congruent, then it's a what? Then it's a parallelogram. If the diagonals bisect each other, then it's a what? Then it's a parallelogram. If, now this is one that's kind of new. If one side one pair of sides is both congruent and parallel, then it's automatically a what? Then it's automatically a parallelogram. All right, if I say draw congruent sides and draw them parallel, you have to construct a what? A parallelogram. All right? And then uh, a summary here. So, so again, we knew all that from yesterday. All right, that's what I'm saying. Today should be super easy. All right? So then they give you a, a just a quick summary at the end of the section. 
So instead of having all that work, I just summarized it and put it down in these notes. Um, so if you're going to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, you have to prove both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Or you can show that both pair of opposite sides are congruent. Or you can show that both pair of opposite angles are congruent, which is pretty hard to do. All right. Or you can show that the diagonals bisect each other. Or you can show that a pair of opposite sides is both parallel and congruent. All right. Again, those are your options. Very simple. All right. So now let's get into the lesson. All right. Which again, did you guys copy all that down now? Mm -hmm. I got that. All right. So here we go. Determine whether each quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Is number one a parallelogram? Yes. yes. Because opposite angles are both pairs, I should say. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. I don't care if you abbreviate, I don't care if you write yes. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make you understand where you are at. If you're B making A, you should write more. All right, if you already are making an A and you're happy with your situation, I don't care if you write yes now, just as long as you know. All right, that's what I'm trying to teach some of you. All right, you got to know where you're at and where you want to be. All right, now let's take a look at number two. No. All right. In order for it to be, the 5.1 would have to be what? It would have to be 4.9 or the 4.9 would have to be 5.1. All right. So that's easy enough. Definitely no. All right. Now you want to make it a parallelogram. So if you want to make it a parallelogram, then what's true? That is correct. Opposite angles. So beautiful. 8x minus 8 must equal 6x plus 14, and 7y plus 2 equals 6y plus 16. All right, now again, we're practicing mental math. For those of you guys who are making careless mistakes, practice your mental math right now. I would love everyone in here to be able to look at the equation on the left and just do it mentally. x equals what? x equals 11. We can all do that, hopefully. Anybody have any questions with the mental math? All right, and then obviously this one's easier. Y equals what? Y equals 14. I told you, very simple, very simple. All right, so now number five, if we want to make that a quadrilateral, or if we want to make the quadrilateral parallelogram, we would have to say that what? And? Now notice, guys, what I'm doing, even though he said x plus 7 first, I write 2x plus 3 equals x plus 7. That way I can just move the, the variables better. You see what I'm saying? I want the variable positive, so I put the 2x on the left. All right, so again, our skills will tell us that y is equal to what? 8. And down here, x is equal to? Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Remember, everybody's going to make a little mistake. The object is to ignore the mistake. Let them figure it out. It's not a big deal. All right. Somebody act like you have never been wrong. Ever. All right. We're trying to get over that annoying quality that some of you have. I don't care if you're right or you're wrong. All right. Here we go. Moving on. What did I do? Where's the rest of it? Five. Twenty-one through twenty-seven. Oh, they're just out of order. Oh, that's just hilarious. All right, here we go. Now we're in order. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is kind of annoying. Graph each quadrilateral. Um, I'm gonna see something here. One, two, three. Okay. Listen. What I think I want to do is because there's a lot of graphing here. All right, how about if I drop it into notability? That way you can graph it easier. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, let me, let me take, give me a second to drop this into uh, notability. I'd rather you just go ahead and do it in notability. I've forgotten that there's a bunch of graphs on here. So let me drop it in notability for you real quick. Oh, yeah, Patty, we got